guys, so today I thought I'd talk about ingredients that are irritating to skin, other than things that are pretty obvious to a lot of people, like fragrance, citrus oils, essential oils, mints, ginger, uh, herbs, things like that. Things that, aside from that, that can really irritate skin. And I've got first these two up here because they both contain isothiazolones, which are very irritating preservatives. They're generally approved to be in rinse-off products typically, but they're still used in a lot of other products. You'll see them in sunscreens from time to time. Uh, Methylcizilolone. I'm just making up as I go now because I can't pronounce it. I practiced once and I'm not good at saying it. Uh, is in this sunscreen, which has more than just that issue. If you read anything about the benzene issue, it is in a lot of sunscreens, which is a carcinogen. But aside from carcinogens that we don't anticipate to be in any skincare products, uh, these preservatives, and I'll put a list of all of these uh, in the description so you can look at them. But it's common uh, synthetic preservatives found in many skin products, hair products, as well as other industrial products. Um, many countries have bans or are looking at bans of these substances due to the known hazards that they contain. Uh, you see them most often in shampoos and rinse-off products like this, purple conditioner, rinse-off product. So at least your exposure to this irritant is very short. You rinse it out, and generally most hair products don't make a ton of contact with the scalp unless you're very thorough. Um, but there's a lot of reports of people... Uh, getting very bad dermatitis from it. Um, it was named irritant of the or allergen of the year by the medic, uh, the uh, American Cosmetic Dermatology Society, um, and it's used. It's just been used a lot. You don't see it as often anymore. It was in a big popular sun bum sunscreen, which they now reformulate and took it out, thankfully. But um, if you use any product with any of these in there. You want it to be a rinse off product, not something like a sunscreen that's going to be on your face all day, which is probably why I was very irritated with this one. But thankfully, this one ended up being one of the ones with benzene. So the fact that I only use it twice is actually probably a good thing because anyway. So these are important ingredients, especially if you have very sensitive skin, rosacea, uh, psoriasis, eczema, things like that. It's just important to make sure they're not in your products, especially things that are leave on products, especially sunscreens. Next up, interestingly enough, Cetaphil that always markets this as a gentle cleanser. They market it everywhere and a lot of people like it. A lot of people use it and there's nothing wrong. If you don't have any problems with it, there's nothing wrong with that. But sodium lauryl sulfate is a very irritating ingredient. SLS. You see a lot of products that say free from SLS, which is because it is uh, can be very irritating. Uh, so generally it functions as a surfactant, uh, but some other products use it. In cleansing products, generally you'll see it, um, but it can be very irritating. It's also used in a lot of cleaning products, which is probably why uh, if you don't use gloves when you're using strong cleaning products, you can get a little bit of irritation because that sodium lauryl sulfate is very irritating. I don't want to confuse SLS with SLES, uh, sodium lauryl sulfate, which is slightly irritating but not nowhere near as irritating as SLS is and a lot of people don't have any issues with it so if you're not very sensitive skin might not be a big issue to you but um, otherwise if you do it's something to look out for and be aware of uh, if it's in your products or look for things that say SLS free um, okay so next up is an interesting ingredient you see it a lot in lip products that give you a tingly feeling and it's menthol um, generally derived from peppermint. It gives products a cooling effect. It's used in a lot of shampoos. I notice it tends to often be in a lot of dandruff shampoos or dandruff uh, treatments, scalp treatments. It happens to be in a lot of them to the point where my scalp was very itchy, flaky, and it took me a ton of time research to find uh, a couple products that didn't contain it that worked well. Um, Nioxine, uh, they have a huge brand and they use peppermint oil and menthol in a lot of them, especially their scalp care line. I still use this scalp care conditioner, um, but I'm looking to find my next out of it because I got a giant bottle. It's almost done. I'm not going to repurchase it because of the menthol in there. Um, interestingly enough, it can be used in a lot of other products like this Skinvolve uh, body gel. It does. It gives things a cooling effect, which kind of makes your skin feel... Uh, less irritated in the minute, but once it cools off and dries, your skin can be left really irritating. 
Um, and that stinging, cooling sensation effect you get from it is actually your skin being irritated. Um, so interesting, peppermint oil is made up of 40 to 50% menthol. Um, gives them the menti scent. Menthol does have some itch reducing, antibacterial, and penetration enhancing properties, which is probably why it is used in things like this. But in the long run, it acts as an irritant and increases transepidermal water loss and dries out skin. So you're better off avoiding it when possible. Um, okay, so next up is Sasechuan peppercorn, which is tends to be in, you see it more often in K-Beauty products. I'm not exactly certain why. Um, it's a relative of black pepper oil, which black pepper gives things kind of a spicy uh, taste to it. So black pepper... Uh, also gives a kind of a numbing, plumping effect. It's very sensitizing and it can irritate skin. Uh, one brand I noticed that used a lot of it was Kate Somerville uses, uses it in a lot of their products. So it is worth checking it out, especially if you have sensitive skin, to make sure you're not using anything with black pepper oil. Another popular exfoliant, acetic acid, which is present in a pretty high amount of the Biologic Recharge uh, Toner, which is a very popular product. Um, acetic acid is found in vinegar, some fruits. It's also found in human sweat. It can be very sensitizing and irritating and drying to the skin, especially in larger amounts. In smaller amounts, very small amounts, it can change the pH of a formula. That's not as much to be concerned about, but when it's used in large amounts, it can be irritating to skin, drying to the skin, and leave it kind of feeling red and irritated. So it has disinfecting properties um, and it can be used for some people if antibiotic resistance is an issue, but generally in skincare products, especially if you have sensitive skin, it's something worth avoiding. Um, so the Biologic P50 lotion, I know a lot of people love it, but my skin did not. Um, other ingredients, apple cider vinegar. So this is an interesting one because I actually had luck using apple cider vinegar as a hair rinse for my scalp, but on your face, skin, things like that. A I apple cider vinegar can be an irritant, so it's worth checking out. Um, as well as ingredients like Arnica. Arnica shows up in more skincare products than I ever thought I would see. Arnica can be calming to the skin, but it's one of those ingredients that shouldn't be used every single day because the longer you use it, the less of the good benefits you get and the more potential irritation you can get. So Arnica is something worth uh, checking for. Uh, silver, gold, colloidal gold, horse chestnut extract, uh, borate. When I when I wrote borate, I thought borat. My name is Borat. Right? Anyway, so if you see borate, you don't want it. Don't think borat. My name is Borat. I, you like me? Anyway, my stand-up career failed miserably. <laughs> But the only had person in the audience was cameraman. So I think if I had another person in the audience, maybe I could have made a career of it. So silver, it has disinfectant properties, but prolonged use of it uh, can cause irritation and sensitization. So these are my main ingredients of note uh, to watch for, common ones that you still see quite often in a lot of products that can irritate your skin. And you might not even notice it on the ingredient list because sometimes brands will make it look just fine. Or they'll have it labeled gentle skin cleanser when the one, two, three, fourth ingredient is one of the main irritators that exist. But a lot of people still use them. No problem. So I'm jealous. But uh, it's hard to find them when you see something labeled gentle skin and the fourth ingredient is a very known irritant. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to wade through them all and know what you're looking for. So... Um, I'm sure there's a ton of other ones I missed, so maybe I'll make a part two. But uh, other ingredients that you don't expect to be in your sunscreens, like benzene. I can't even put that on this list because it's not even supposed to be in anything. So um, anyway, so those are my thoughts. I'll include this list below. Leave a comment if you have any thoughts, questions, or product questions. So I uh, love hearing from you guys, and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much. My name is Borat. You're Borat.